Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another episode of the Melon Review. Today we're going to be doing something a little different from what we normally cover on the channel. Wise Owl was kind enough to send out their brand new Lightning 60 HE keyboard for me to review, and today we're going to be doing some unboxing and first impressions. Now, I actually haven't used any Rapid Trigger boards before, which is shocking. I've been using a old HyperX Alloy Origins Core keyboard for like seven years. I'm very, very far behind in the keyboard world, but I've heard a lot of really good things about Rapid Trigger boards in terms of their performance and the benefits they can offer as opposed to more traditional keyboards like the one I've been using for the past seven years. So I'm very excited to finally get a taste of what a Rapid Trigger keyboard is like. So thank you very much again to Wise Owl, who was kind enough to send this out for review. Now, this is going to be an unboxing and first impressions video of the Lightning 60. I will have a much more in-depth review of this board coming out in a couple weeks once I have some time to do some more testing on it. So if you want to see a much more in-depth review of the Lightning 60, be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss my full review coming out in a couple weeks. Let's get started by talking about the pricing for the Lightning 60 and its features. All right, now this board retails from Wise Owl's site for 99 USD, but then the price seems to vary on other sites. For example, this same board on Mech Keys is listed for 129.99 USD. So I'm not sure why there's so much of a price variance. I'm assuming you're going to find it in between the $99 USD range or the $129 USD range. It will just depend on where you're able to find the board. The board does have quite a few features. So it is a seed seed aluminum frame. Now this is not entirely aluminum, just the top is aluminum, the bottom is plastic, which is unfortunate. It would have been nice to see the entire thing be aluminum, but it's not that big of a deal. Now this is designed to be an ultra compact board. So it is a 60% board. Now I don't think I've actually ever used a 60% board before. I believe this is the same layout as the original Wooting keyboard as well. So that makes sense. We're going for the 60% here, but this is definitely going to be a bit of an interesting layout. I do like the idea of a small compact board, but in terms of my very large hands, I'm not sure how well my hands are going to play with a 60% board, but we'll find out when I do some testing on this one. Now the Lightning 60 HE is using magnetic switches. They are linear switches. However, I don't know what kind of switch they are. The board is in hot swappable and I haven't been able to find any kind of listing of what the switches are in this board. So I'll try and find that out for the full review. Now, the really cool thing about these magnetic switches is that they actually have 48 adjustment points between 0.2 millimeters and 3.8 millimeters in terms of when you want the keys to actuate, which is a really, really cool feature. Again, I'm very used to traditional boards. So this is something very different. So I'm excited to see how this kind of adjustable trigger works, but I'll talk more about that in the full review, of course. Now, of course, this board does have rapid trigger technology, as I mentioned at the top of the video. It is also a gasket mounted board. It has full RGB backlight. It has shine through keycaps and it runs over wired USB-C. There is no wireless option for that board, but given that it's a keyboard, I prefer them to be wired anyway, so that's not that big of a deal. But that's enough about the features. Let's unbox the Lightning 60 and see what this board is all about. Now, one really unique thing about the Lightning 60 that I haven't really seen with a lot of other boards is that this one actually just comes with a carrying case and the carrying case is actually very, very nice. I don't think I've seen any other high performance boards come with a carrying case like this. And this is just a really nice thing because it's really good for storage, but it also makes it very usable for someone who's going to take this to a tournament or LAN. It's very easy just to safely keep the keyboard in the box, which is a really nice attention to detail. So the carrying case is a big plus. Now I did want to highlight one other really cool thing about this case. It does have a bottom, very soft area for the keyboard. It has like a dust cover on top of that as well, which is strapped over by these little Velcro straps. And then on top of that, it has an upper area as well, where you can keep user manual and extra cables and just miscellaneous things as well, which is a really, really cool thing to see. And this is just a really nice feature because it's very easy just to store the cable and everything else you need inside the packaging, which is awesome to see. Now, surprisingly, the cable for the Lightning 60 isn't actually included in this carrying case here. It's actually packed separately. I'm not really sure why. I'm assuming because it's a coiled cable, it just doesn't fit in the packaging, which is kind of funny because it's included, but it doesn't fit in the packaging. Maybe if you took the plastic dust cover off from the inside, it would fit okay, but I'm not going to try and jam it into the board. Regardless, you can always swap this out for a thinner cable. It's not that big of a deal, but the included coil wrap cable is really nice. Feels very premium. has a nice paracord wrapping on it and does look very nice. Again, with keyboards, commonly we see them come with just very standard cables. So it's very nice to see a very aesthetic cable included here with the Lightning 60. Now, before we talk about the board feel, I did want to highlight the actual look of this board. I personally love the way this board looks. The outer plastic aluminum frame kind of has like a blue gem kind of feel to it. And the keycaps do have a bit of a navy tinge to them as well. But the really cool thing I really like about this board is the keycaps because they are shine through keycaps, but they have this kind of runic lettering on the top of them. This reminds me a lot of the runic symbols you kind of find like Doom Eternal and original Doom 2016, which I personally love those games. So this is a really kind of cool aesthetic you see here. I know not everyone's going to be a fan of the keycaps, but I personally really like the way they look. And the keycaps look even better when you add on the RGB from the board, but I'll talk about that a little later. All right, now in terms of the board itself, the board feels very solid. There's no flexing or creaking anywhere on the board. It is very solidly constructed. As I mentioned at the top of the video, the top frame here is aluminum and the bottom is plastic. Again, I would have liked to see this entire thing be aluminum, but it's not that big of a deal. There's no QC problems or any kind of creaking or flexing that I've noticing so far. Now, in terms of ergonomics, the keyboard doesn't really have any height adjustment on it. It is just a flat keyboard, which I personally like. I don't really like the super 
progressive tilted boards. I prefer the more flat ones. So this one feels very comfortable for me. Of course, you could always add on somebody to the bottom to raise it up if you wanted to, but for my personal taste, the ergonomics feel very, very good so far. Now, the keycaps don't really have any kind of texturing to them to increase your grip on the keycaps, but since the board isn't super tilted and it's pretty comfortable in terms of ergonomics, that's not that big of an issue for me. Again, if you want a keycaps with a little more gripability, you can always swap them out for another kind of keycap, or you can put grip tape on top of the keycaps. The keys on the board also feel really nice. They're not too heavy, but they're also not too light. It's a kind of a middle ground in terms of their actuation weight. They feel very solid. Again, they are linear switches, so there's no tactile feedback once you hit a actuation point because it's adjustable because of the rapid trigger tech, which is completely fine. I'm used to linear switches, so no problems there. But across the board, all the keys feel very solid. They're consistent in terms of their actuation. Just across the board, they feel very solid. And the great ergonomics of the board, again, really do help this. It is a very comfortable board, maybe a little small for my hands, just because, again, it is a 60%, but it'll take some time for me to get adjusted to the smaller board. Now, in terms of the typing sound, I'll give you a little sound test here. Alrighty, and lastly, I wanted to talk about the lighting here on the Lightning 60. Now, this keyboard does have full RGB backlighting, and the keys are shined through at the top, so you can see the lettering kind of shining through from the bottom. Now, personally speaking, I'm not really a big fan of RGB just because I find it to be kind of overstimulating, if that makes sense. But the RGB implementation here on the Lightning 60 is actually really, really nice. It's a very nice, like, fancy but not too fancy implementation, and it does look really, really good with these runic keycaps, as I mentioned before. It looks amazing, especially with the full color on the back of them. I really, really really love the way this board looks. So overall, from an aesthetic standpoint, I love the lighting. Again, I don't normally like RGB, but the lighting in combination with the keycaps looks really, really nice. Of course, you can add in like a pudding or shine through keycap if you want to see this RGB a little more, but overall, very good implementation for the lighting. I'm a really big fan of it. And I really do like the way it looks. Alrighty, well, that's pretty much it for my overall first impressions of the Lightning 60HE. Overall, this is a pretty nice board. I think the sizing is a little small for me. Again, I just going to take some time for me to get used to the 60% layout but I actually do really like the way this board feels. It feels very premium and it's pretty well priced as well. I'm very, very interested to see how this rapid trigger technology compares against my current keyboard. It's not really fair comparing an RT keyboard to a keyboard that's seven years old, but I'm interested to see just how much of a performance boost there is between an RT keyboard and like a standard linear keyboard. And I'm very interested to see how the software works with this mouse, how it overall feels in terms of performance and a lot of other things I want to talk about, but I'll cover more about that in the full review after I've done some more testing. But that's everything for today. Thank you again to Wise Owl for sending the Lightning 60 HE out for me to take a look at. I greatly appreciate it. As I mentioned before at the top of the video, I will have a full, much more in-depth review of this board out in a couple weeks, so get subscribed so you don't miss that video. But that's everything for now. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode of the Melon Review. Peace. <laughs>